So today I'm going to teach you how to play King of New York by Yellow Games. This is going to be a two player with the setup and then the first round of play for each player. It's just the basic rules. I'm not gonna go into the depth of everything you can do in this game because there's no way that I can explore that all. I haven't even done it by playing it through. Right now, let's go ahead and go down to my table and have a look at how to play King of New York. Let's get set up to play King of New York by Yellow Games. First, we're going to set up the board. We're going to lay that out on the table. And then we're going to pick out our characters. Today, we're going to use the Sheriff T-Rex and the Gigasaur. This is a two-player game today because we're just going to show one turn for each player. Get them set up on their standees. And then we pull out their cards. The cards have counters with the victory points and the health points. So we set the counter at the beginning of the game for zero victory points and 10 health points. Now the point of this game is to make sure that you either kill off all of the other monsters by reducing all of their health points to zero or by reaching 20 victory points. So when one player reaches 20, they are the winner, or when all players but one are eliminated, the remaining player is the winner. Up next, we're going to take the six black dice and set them aside. We'll use those more later. Now we're pulling out the power tokens. These are little green cubes that represent power that allow you to buy some power cards later on in the game. Now we're setting up the star and the Statue of Liberty card. Those are special powered cards that allow you to gain victory points or get special power throughout the game as well. We are now setting up three cards from the deck. These are the power cards that you can purchase with those power cubes. And they give you special abilities throughout the game. And then we will set the deck aside because once someone purchases one of those cards, we will have to draw a new one from the deck. We are now stacking buildings in each borough of New York. You do three stacks with three chits each in each borough of New York. So there are going to be three high rises and you can do damage to the buildings throughout the game. When you damage a building, it gets flipped over and turns into a military vehicle, which gives you other things to damage as well. By damaging and destroying buildings and military vehicles, you can do things like regain health points, get more power cubes, or even gain victory points depending on what's indicated on those buildings or the military vehicles. We now have these two extra dice. Those are supplied because there is one card that allows you to use extra dice when you roll. And now the T-Rex Sheriff is selecting the borough they want to start in in New York City. And now the Gigasaur is selecting their borough as well. You cannot start in Manhattan, so you have to pick another one of the boroughs. Now we're going to roll to see who goes first. The player that rolls the most amount of the claw or attack symbols is the one that goes first. So we're saying that the Gigasaur rolled the highest, and so they get to go first. We now roll our dice, and we get to set some aside, and we can re-roll up to three times, setting dice aside as we see fit. So we're keeping a power token, or an attack symbol. We're now going to take two of these building destruction symbols, and the final roll we end up with an ouch, a health, and a power. So this means that we can take a power token. We are not doing that this time, but we should. We're taking two of the buildings and destroying them. These particular buildings each get damaged by one building destruction, and they each give one victory point. So we take two victory points. Now, at the end of the turn, if no one is in Manhattan, then the monster whose turn it is has to move into Manhattan. By doing so, they get another victory point. And they are required to move into Manhattan if it's empty. And then they still have the one attack point, so they're attacking the T-Rex dinosaur. 
Now, the monster that's in Manhattan does damage to all of the other monsters that are outside of Manhattan. If you're outside of Manhattan and you roll an attack claw, then you're going to attack the monster in Manhattan. So now we're rolling for the T-Rex Sheriff. We're going to keep one of these health points because we took damage on the Gigasaur's turn. And then we're re-rolling to get more dice. So we have an attack point. We have a star. We have three power symbols. So we're going to take three power cubes. This will allow us to purchase one of those cards off to the side a little bit later. And then we're going to heal and we're going to do damage to the Gigasaur. Now, if you're in Manhattan and you take damage, you have the ability to leave Manhattan right away, which is what I'm doing with the Gigasaur because I don't want to take more damage. So that requires the T-Rex Sheriff to move into Manhattan, which means they take another victory point for moving into Manhattan. The play goes on like this with a lot of extra variability throughout the game. And the again, the player who gets the most or gets to 20 victory points uh, first or eliminates all of the other monsters is the winner. So the play goes on until one player either reaches 20 victory points or has eliminated all of the other players from the game. So either 20 victory points or zero health points and then the remaining player is the winner. I definitely recommend reading through the rules on this just to make sure you're 100% clarified, but this should get your teaching time down to just a few minutes and help you get set up very quickly. I hope you enjoy playing this game as much as I do. Until next week. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching. I'd really love it if you would tell me what you thought of this video in the comments. If you agree with me, you disagree with me. If you have any thoughts or opinions, I'd love to hear it. You can also tweet me at Arthur Rhetorical on Twitter. You can find me on Patreon and Facebook as Rhetorical Entertainment. If you're not subscribed yet, click that little button down there. Also, if you want to see something cool, click the little button over there. I don't know where it leads, but you're going to find out if you click on it. All I can tell you is that whatever's there is pretty awesome. So until next time, thank you so much for watching.